go. Look at that, it makes it all worth it. How many hours of driving? How many hours of driving was it worth it? Oh gosh, yeah, what, 16? Felt like we, more? We took a three and a half hour nap in the car in Lebanon, Missouri. Oh, but yes, <laughs> very much worth it, very much worth it. Ready? Yay! Welcome back everyone, I'm Justin. And I'm Paige. And we are Being, Being Adventurous. Adventurous. Uh, on this episode, we uh, this is our Chicago Auto Show episode. Our what episode? Chicago. Chicago. Uh, <laughs> Chicago Auto Show episode. Um, and I'll tell you, from where we live, it's a you know <laughs> sixteen hour drive. A yes. little bit more if you stop for a nap. Um, we we do like driving straight through to places, um, but I think uh, after this trip. We may want to reevaluate just how much of it do we do straight versus you know proper rest in between, because um, it was well. Luckily, our next trip will be stopping to charge. Well, and that that's one thing that we were <laughs> consciously thinking about mm -hmm. while driving to and from Chicago is you know how often are we actually stopping, even though we don't need to. But every time we stop, we stop and we we fill up gas because we're there and go to the restroom and things like that. And you know the more we thought about it. You know, the more it helped us realize that, you know, from a, from an EV perspective, it really wouldn't add a, a lot of time to our trip overall because we do enjoy those breaks. Right. It helps break it up. And especially uh, in a potentially more comfortable car to nap in. Yes. Probably uh, more enjoyable. Where the, yeah, the seats look a lot more comfortable. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but we'll uh, get to that. We'll get we'll to get, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we will get to that. But... Anyway, 16 hours both ways. Um, we were so excited to go. And to the point where instead of leaving the Friday morning like we had originally planned, because uh, we were going to leave Friday morning and get there Saturday morning and do the, the whole show on the Saturday before driving back. Uh, we were so excited about it. It's like after my, my last work call on Thursday evening, um, around 10 o'clock at night, you know, we pretty much just packed packed our stuff and and hopped in the car and started the drive and uh it worked out really well we only stopped for uh, i think like a two hour nap ish yeah nap shout nap. out to the come and go in lebanon missouri you were your parking lot was very comfortable uh, and and <laughs> and pizza the next morning friday special buy one get one free the the yep. cauliflower crust is very good and the breakfast pizza was delicious yeah so it, it uh it helped power us through the rest of the day and a little bit of the, the night and even the next day um <laughs> yeah. but what it did is it afforded us to uh uh go to the show the evening before right thank goodness and and yeah, definitely thank goodness. Mm -hmm. So you know, let's you know, kind of jump in first to, you know, kind of what what our expectations were heading into the Chicago Auto Show. Yes. What were yours? Well, I had been to shows at the fair. I don't know if you've ever been to the State Fair of Texas, but they have a big auto show there, and so I was used to that type of show where you can go in and you see the spinning cars on the platforms and the models that are out beside it, you know, showing everything. Um, that you can go around and look at all the concept cars and you can look at all the cars that are currently in production and touch them and open them and sit in them and, you know, play with all the buttons and stuff. And so that's that was my expectation going into it. Yeah, for me, I had similar expectations, even though I had never experienced an, uh, an auto show uh like that in person I, i've seen the the televised highlights and things like that and that's where you you know see the shiny cars the 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 pretty people showing them off lights flashing music blaring boom 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 mm. pomp and circumstance and all that kind of stuff and um and then of course you know being you know from the industry that i'm in very similar a lot of a lot of show and go and um so i was really excited to see that and especially with this one because they had the evening event on the outside. They had a street fest. They had a street fest, right. which, which again, it worked out well because we were there in time to go to it on the Friday night. Right. And it was great. They had, you know, the food food trucks because it started around... 6.30? 6.30. 630. So great to have a, a good food truck selection, although limited seating, 
which I thought that was uh, not very well thought out. And then aside from food trucks, they also had this other section um, as well. The downside is because it was drizzly, uh, it, was, it was an overcast day and it rained on and off the entire trip. Um, it, it didn't allow us to check out the rest of the street fest beyond just, you know, grabbing our dinner and talking to the, the Kia some guys. of the, the Kia yeah. folks because they were right there uh, with the by the food truck that we picked and and they, they were great. Oh yeah, fantastic. They were so nice and um, they were really excited to meet us and to learn about what we were doing there and, and kind of our expectations. And one of the things the one of the gentlemen said was, wow, your story, I just love it that you're driving so far and you're so excited and, and you really, you're bought in on this car. And he said, every day we have to come back with a takeaway from something that we learned or someone that we talked to. And he's like, you are my takeaway for today. And so that made us happy, you know, that that gave us a little boost, I think. But then the other thing that they shared was that some other people had been down earlier from the show and said that they were disappointed because the EV6 wasn't there. And we were like, no, 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 it's supposed to be there. We were told it was going to be here. It was on the website and so, we decided we would scarf down our dinner and go on and run upstairs and go to the show and see what we could find out. Yeah, and so that let, that allows us to transition and kind of into the the realities of the show. So one, you know, because a lot of places are still, you know, having COVID issues and things like that. Um, and we didn't know what to expect from an attendance perspective anyway. It didn't, there wasn't a ton of people on the Friday nights. Right. Um, but it was great. It allowed us to look around, uh, not being too hampered by anybody else wanting to check out vehicles that perhaps we were looking at. I think one of the things that we ran into, though, was because this was the Friday and we weren't pressed, press did their, their stuff Thursday, there was definitely some limitations what regular folks could do and touch and see uh, versus what the, the press could. So that was... Uh, was unfortunate to find out. Sure. And it, it would have been better had we known what we were going to see or be able to see yeah. <clears throat> before making the commitment to drive all this way. Yeah, and, and that kind of leads into a reoccurring information theme that we, we will discuss throughout this episode. Right. But it certainly, um, you know, talk, speaks to you Kia more than more than a, uh, a lot of the other manufacturers oh. from an information perspective sure sure yeah. but in general i mean <clears throat> a, a, most of the reps were very knowledgeable and I, I guess you can look at it as all the reps were knowledgeable with one exception um given the information that they were given right i mean a lot of times you, a lot of times when you go when you're working a show you are limited as to what you can and can't say to, to people we get that they you know they want to keep things secret or whatnot the, the downside was, is, you know, since the hype was there, and of course they had that lackluster review, uh, North American reveal and things like that, it would have been nice that they, it would have been nice if they released new information to right. continue that interest curve, to continue the hype curve. Uh, because that, you know, especially for us, I mean, we drove, driving six hours, we are thirsty for information, especially with regards to the first edition, because we had it ordered. So please, <clears throat> if you have any new information you can tell us about our first edition and stuff, that'd be fantastic. Right. So that that was the only frustrating part, but I certainly don't blame them. Um, that's something I kind of blame on, on Kia American Corporate, if I'm going sure. to blame anybody. Um, so anyway, we walk into the show, and the EV6 is on stage, their showpiece car, spinning around on the platform, and my heart breaks. Yeah. And or I'm, what is your heart break? Because I know that those are the cars you can't touch. Right. Because, From my experience, you can't touch right. those. Because it's on the main stage, so it's it's you know blocked off, walled off, however you want to want to discuss it. And yeah, it was not anywhere else on the show floor, yeah. uh, except the the GMP platform reference thingy, the skeleton and things like that. But right. That's just the platform. So yeah. 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 That was kind of disappointing. It was like, you could hear the heart crush a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, oh, all this drive just to see it. Well, it was kind of going to be frustrating. But well, they were they were giving out backpacks. And so they were like, well, if you want to give us your information, we'll give you some information on the car. Great. We're looking for information on the car. And we'll give you a backpack. 
super, let's get a backpack. So the lady comes over and she's taking my information and she's like, what is your interest? And I said, well, we're here for the Kia, EV, the Kia EV6. I cannot say that. I need to learn. Um, we're here for that car. And we just drove 16 hours straight through to be able to touch this car and look inside because we are first edition purchasers. And our expectation is that we're going to get to look inside the car. You know, I we'd love to have test drove the car, but, you know, is there any way that we can physically touch this car? And she's like, well, let me see what I can do. And she did it. Yeah. We got up on stage. They they slowed it down for us and eventually they turned the it's stage off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we couldn't sit inside of it. Mm -hmm. But we did get to touch everything, open all the doors, open all the all the trunks and fronks and you know, everything and oh my gosh. Yeah. We made the right decision. It was really good. We like, and we we felt you know really special because we weren't press. I mean, our, our channel hadn't been even turned on at that point. Sure. So I mean, they didn't really have to do anything for us. I mean, we, we, you know, we always look at ourselves. Yeah, you know, we're just we're, we're a nobody from that perspective, right? Um, so we were extremely grateful that the the Kia folks and and really everyone at Kia, we we can't speak highly enough of they they all were fantastic from top to bottom. Um, they were, they provide such a great experience, and then going above and beyond, and allowing, you know, stopping the platform and allowing us to to film content. And if I can, you know, figure out a, a Adobe Premiere enough, I'll try to splice in some of that footage. If not, <laughs> I'll maybe put up a, a raw video footage of all of our interactions. But it, it's even better in person. Uh, so yeah. if if you have positive a uh, positive uh, feedback on other videos of what you saw this it's they're only better in person um that's all i can say it was just i mean it wasn't the gt version of course but it was we don't know if it was the first edition version right but we know we liked what we saw we absolutely liked yeah. what we saw um i think it was probably i think it was really the 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 first edition because it seemed to have what we know of the gt line but without the gt line body mm -hmm. at least it didn't have the gt line marking on the back Either way, fantastic looking all around. The full 360 was beautiful. Uh, being able to reach inside and check it out, it was great. And and the and the, uh, Carla she, uh, Carla from Burbank, uh, <laughs> she, she was really nice and really helpful. And um, again, her and and the team on the show floor were extremely thankful for them to allowing us to just check it out and and be that hands on, even though we we weren't press. Uh, and whatnot. So that was Kia really, really stepped up and made the show. Cause it, it would have been cr heart crushing had they not allowed us to do that. Uh, I mean, speaking personally, it would have completely deflated me. It really would have. Yeah. Cause, Cause the expectations were there. And again, because they said it was going to be shown there. And, and I think it goes back to the information, you know, I think it behooves all the, the manufacturers to be explicit about what's going to be at the show and what kind of interactivity you can have with, with those models because if people are planning their their time off regardless of how long it takes you to get to a show you deserve to know what you can and can't do in order to make the best educated decision possible i mean we were not worried about the entrance fee to the show i mean we we paid for it twice just so we could do the street fest on the friday night and then go back again on saturday for for more um and that's fine uh, but you know 16 hours does does take time out of you know we each day our days off uh it takes time from a monetary perspective from a mileage perspective on my current on my on my current baby all that kind of stuff adds up so uh kudos, kudos and, to kia and an additional expense that was not uh, uh, not planned um going through st louis we got hit in the windshield by a rock yeah which it, ended up you know Splitting the windshield. It, it, it split really fast because <laughs> we we immediately looked for a glass place because we thought, okay, look, if we can get to it quickly, maybe they can use that filler fluid and, and we'll be fine. And so I, it didn't take us long to find a glass dealer and, and they're like, yeah, too late. So, yeah. and by the time we got home, it was all the way up through our windshield and uh, we ended up getting it replaced, but that's an added cost. We're happy to pay because it was such a great experience. Yeah. So, um, so that covers Kia. Sure. So the next dealer that we looked at was the Nissan. Well, actually, before we finish off in Kia, let's talk about day two. Okay. Because that's when we uh, went and downstairs and we talked to the 
the same guys from, same the, night guys from the night before, as well as other, other people from <clears> Kiev, <throat> because they were allowing you to test drive their entire lineup, including the Stinger, the, you know, the K5 and things like that. So that was kind of nice that they were allowing you to test their entire lineup, minus the EV6, of course. And it was great to test the, the current Nero, because that is their current EV, and, and we thought that that might give us a sense of, you know, where they're at now, and we know EV6, you know, knock on wood, will be better. Right. And then, and the interesting thing was, is, you know, uh, Paige did the initial test drive and I was in the back and it rode fantastic. I, I, I really can't say enough positive things about the Nero. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's certainly not a vehicle for us, but that's a vehicle that we could recommend all day and all night to people. Sure, it was sure. really, really good. Um, but when mm -hmm. we got back, the, one of the, one of the, the guys was asking if we uh, tried it in sport mode. I'm like, I didn't even know it had sport mode. So I did the test drive in sport mode and yeah more pickup the ev6 should will be faster of course but it was nice to get a more accelerated uh, and more towards the experience of the ev6 uh, acceleration experience because that's what i i like to to look at for me i like that sensation so that was good to experience and again it drove well handled well all the kind of stuff that you would you would expect from a Nero, right it's not a sports car it's just it's a great all-around uh suv crossover i'm not mm -hmm. sure how they categorize it and then one thing that we saw on Friday night, and we we test drove it because the display model was beautiful. It was it was in an area where you couldn't touch it, but it looked so sharp. And we will try to post a picture of it so that you can see what we're talking about. Was the Kia Sorento, and they let us drive it, and it's their seven seater, and it has the same wheelbase. As the key, the EV6 has the same little base as the Sorento, so we thought, well, it'll give us a kind of a feel of how long the car is and maybe how to manage it and stuff. And um, oh, that Sorento's beautiful. Well, the, so the <laughs> the wheelbase, I'm not sure if it's the if if the Sorento is the equal match. I know the Telluride is. Oh, okay. Telluride okay. is. I don't know how that compares to the sport, uh, the Sorento, but the reason the other reason why we wanted to do the Sorento was to get a better feel for the interior quality. Yes. Because we knew that the interior of the Nero, while nice wasn't representative of what the EV6 would be. Uh, and, we, and we knew what they were showing up on the floor, um, but we knew that wasn't representative potentially of what the first edition interior would be. So we wanted to make sure that we had the overall experience of you know how well Kia can pull off that higher end, higher quality interior. Mm -hmm. So that was a great experience. And plus it gave us insight of their, into their software platform. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, the, the camera and the turns and checking the... the, the the, that was really neat. Yeah, the, yeah I have some good footage uh, of that. Traffic beside you and things like sure. that. So a lot of the pre preventive software. So that was a great overall experience to take into account as well. And then, as Paige said, we will try to dig up the photo of the display model that they had. It was kind of, I always, I said it was kind of like Jeep-ish because they really made it utilitarian. That is a strong color design, a great aggressive front look with the knobby, big knobby tires. And it just looked hella sharp. So if, if I were in a market for that, that would be one that I'd be like, oh, please bring this to market. It looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. Yeah. So, so I think that covers, I'm just looking at Paige's notes. I think that covers, um, oh, well, the last thing for Kia was on the second day, uh, they, uh, they, we were actually, we wearing our shirts the second day because we were prepared. Uh, they took pictures of us to add to their, their second day takeaway. So, mm -hmm. and then, you know, uh, we will hopefully we, at some point, maybe we'll win a free vehicle because we're in that drawing too. So. Who knows? Who knows? That'd be freaking fantastic. They kept saying, you need to you need to talk to Kia. You need to get them to, to see your channel. And we're like, okay, we're, we're really, you know, early on in this. But yeah. you, you just tell Expectations, them. Expectations, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, Tell them our names. <laughs> exactly. Spread the word. We're, we're definitely uh, Kia fans. Uh, and we're glad we made that decision. So um, let's go. Who do you want to cover next? Replace the battery. Let's move on to Nissan. The Aria. Yeah. Thoughts? It was beautiful color. We really enjoyed it. It was it, really sharp, yeah. It was like a rose gold. Was that the gold Almost, one? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. kind of a gold color. and um, it, But it had these big black paint over the tires. I, I mean, the, I, the, on top of the wheel well. Yeah, yeah rim, and yeah. it was like really thick and glossy, and I wasn't a real big fan of that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually really detracting because it was too much of it. Yeah, 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 it was really thick, um, but we'll tr we'll try to post a picture of it. And it was another one of those cars where you couldn't touch. They had a little barrier around it, so you couldn't open it up, couldn't sit inside of it. You could just kind of 
You move your head around and look and kind of go like this so you can see the top of it. Yeah, and the windows, windows were tinted, so it made it more difficult to see inside. Mm -hmm. But we, we did manage to get a glimpse of the cockpit, per se, um, where they're using a dual display setup, you know, with Kia's, like the Ionic is, and, you know, like Ford is to an extent. Um, but it's weird, instead of having it uh, in like a straight line like uh, Hyundai appears to have with their Ionic 5 or curved like the Kia, it was basically offset. They both look straight a little for the most part, but then but they were offset about an inch. One was inch forward than the other, and I just felt that was kind of odd. But the reality is, until we can sit in it and experience it, that that may be perfectly fine. And I don't see it being a deal breaker for anybody. I just found it kind of odd that they went that design choice because it does look strange when you first look at it. Yeah, and the the representative was limited in his knowledge. He really basically had press releases and some pictures, so he couldn't give us a lot of detail about the car. Uh, it was taller than the Mustang and the the EV6, so it it seemed like a larger electric vehicle. L larger crossover, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, to the knowledge thing, I mean, again, uh, having worked show, I get that they're <clears> limited <throat> in what they can say, and, you know, Ollie potentially could talk about what was, what was, what was mentioned in the press release, but if that's the case, then learn the material. I mean, every question shouldn't result in them having to look at the press release. They need to be confident in the knowledge that they have because that's really a detraction. Because at the end of the day, then, then I'm left thinking, you know, what do I need this person for? They, they can just say, you know, give me, just give me a copy of the press release and then I can walk away and <laughs> enjoy sure. my time elsewhere. Sure. Um, so. It was day one, though. It was, well, it was day two if you count the press because the press oh, did have true. full that's access true. to the vehicle the day before. Yeah. So if uh, I would assume that the press would have asked all these relevant questions the day before. So at the very least, they should have that as a reference. So that was, again, it was just disappointing, but it was just nice to see it there. Yeah. I mean, we want to see as many EV vehicles as possible. We want people in general to see the selection of EV vehicles so the, the general population can get more confidence in uh, making the the EV choice uh, like like we did so um, that's that's always going to be a positive we're not going to be negative about that sure yeah but yeah it would have been nice to build to get inside but from what we saw we, we do like it uh, you know I've never been a huge Nissan fan so I'm going to you know reserve for the thought until we can check it out in person and I think they're saying it's shipping this fall so I would hope that you know they do the proper way to see their dealers and I'm hoping that they would see the higher end trim model for people to evaluate so that way they have a, a better experience when they do their test drives and hands-on to increase the chance that the user the person who's checking out would make the decision to take that leap yeah and i think that's a great lead-in to ford okay so the mach e yeah. um you know we we had looked at mach-e's very early on in our decision making process and one of the problems that we had in what we had access to locally was that it was the base model and so Justin kind of left me at the show I got to talk into a nice young older gentleman not young older gentleman and Justin headed off towards the Mach-E display and by the time I got there I thought we had bought a car well I mean look <laughs> It, they had they had the GT version on display. It wasn't the GT performance, but it, it, visually they looked the same. It had the color that I, I was already specking out to buy the Mach-E when I was originally thinking about it. Mm. The interior was very nice. Oh my gosh. I, I dug the interior with the seating and whatnot. Um, and it was, so it was nice to be able to sit in that highest end possible interior. And I'm assuming that, you know, minus the seat difference, it's probably very similar to the premium interior sure. um, but the seats were just you know the seats were leveled up and uh, it was just nice to be so close to that the the rep uh, um, I, I remember her as Fumu you seem to remember her name a little bit Fumi her name differently but end of right. the day she was fantastic she was a gearhead she, yeah it was oh I mean, my goodness she yeah her and Justin the passion that they had for cars and just talking and bouncing back and forth off each other it was adorable Well, because we were talking about you know that i have the rs because you know a lot of times the, they will ask you what you have now to get a, a sense of you know kind of where you lean and how to mm -hmm. better direct you to potential models and whatnot so um 
you know, she knows she knows the RFs very well, and she is aware of its resale value and its collector value and things like that. And uh, the funny thing is, she was actually saying that I should hold off in selling it, right? Because the value is most likely just going to go up. But for me, I'm I'm more conservative from that perspective, uh, so uh, I'm 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 still going to move forward selling it. But uh, it was just nice to uh, speak with someone again who who is knowledgeable right. and and shares that passion because that does really help. Uh, when you're trying to, you know, take a chance on buying a car, especially with one that, like we said, we didn't have a great test drive experience uh, in the past. Right. And so she invited us to come back the next day. Mm -hmm. and First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Let's get here at 9 a.m. I'll be here. You come back and we will let you test drive this car. Yeah. So not this car. Not but the GT, but, not, but a the Ford, premium yeah. ones. So um, we did come back the next day bright and early bright and early she was there yep. and she got us all registered to go downstairs to experience the ford mustang mach -E. and the experience was that you got to go and sit in a show a presentation that would have covered their big four vehicles right the mach e the maverick the bronco and, and the lightning and then lightning right so mm -hmm. not not only would you have to sit through that but because we were there so early um they the people who are running the experience didn't let the people in the booth know that the test drives didn't start until after they after the 10 a.m show so we most likely wouldn't have got into the mach -E until 10 15 10 20 depending on how long that show was and then that wasn't even the biggest issue but that was one of them Mm -hmm. because there was no place to get a drink or anything like that, and you're waiting outside for... We would have had to wait outside for about 45 minutes. Right. But what was the, 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 the deal breaker it, for us? It was not a test drive. Right. It was a test, test ride. Ride, yes. Like, yeah, you know, that's not how I want to experience a vehicle, especially sure. because of the price of these vehicles. Let me let me drive this. I, I We're not on a racetrack, so I, I can understand if we're on a racetrack, because, yeah, you want a professional driver who's going to be pushing a car to limits. We're on city streets. That is not going to be the case. Right. So we decided to forego the test ride and went back into the show because we knew we still had a 16-hour drive ahead of us. So we wanted to be able to experience as much of the other cars as we could um, without having to wait to be driven around like an Uber ride. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... The let's move on to Chevy. Okay. So again, it's, it, this is um, it wasn't for you know, wasn't the basis of we were contemplating going down the Chevy route because as we noted in previous videos, we were not a never a big fan of their interiors, and even their exterior designs were questionable, especially when it comes to the Spark. But they were there. But they were there, and they had you know the big display, yeah. their Chevy Volt. Bolt. They had the Bolt. Uh, EV. EV and UE, or EUV. EUV. So that was nice. And again, you know, for us, part part of the going to the show was not just to look at what we were interested in and at, at the one point I had already pre-ordered, but just to build our knowledge in general. And so we wanted to check out as many EVs as possible mm -hmm. because we want that reference because it's not just for us, but if we can help other people make a decision as to which EV vehicle is best for them or better for them, we're, we're glad to share our voice. And if it helps them, fantastic. Um, whether they end up pursuing it or not, that's fantastic too. We just want to help uh, everyone uh, as much as possible get into EVs. So the Chevy rep, and I don't recall her name offhand, she was also really good. Yeah. Really knowledgeable. Although I think it, she ultimately had the pricing mismatch between the two, but um, it she was fantastic and truth be told the those are sh um they're they're nice looking little cars they're very they're sh they're narrow narrow yeah and even in between the two seats they're narrow it's which i narrow. guess is to give the seats more room yes. um i did share some of my original concerns that i had had from the spark and the volt and and she said that was one of the the updates that they had made, especially was to the interior, to make it more appealing to the public and to on some of the concerns people had raised in the past. Yeah, so the interior itself, it had a very premium feel to it. The mm -hmm. ones they had on display. So while they made that may not have been the base trim, 
at least they were capable um, of, of delivering that higher quality interior that some people look for, including us. Yeah, again, these are not vehicles that, that we would pick, but man, we, again, we have no problem recommending these vehicles to other people. I will say the back seat was not the most comfortable. Mm. The underneath your legs, it was kind of raised in the back, and and so it, it to me it didn't feel comfortable. I mean, other people might like. And that's the that. downside with smaller sure. cars; you're sure. going to have those limitations. But I appreciate uh, Chevy continuing to move in the right direction from an mm -hmm. EV perspective, and and really, uh, in some sense, I mean, they're really trying to own a segment of the market. Mm -hmm. And I think they're probably competing against the Nissan Leafs of the world and sure. to an extent even the BMW i3, but fantastic, inexpensive options. Uh, the one thing they, they were mentioning for for the EUV one was, uh, and again, I, I don't know if she had it mixed up with the EV, but they were talking about what they did is because they, their cars no longer qualify for the federal rebate, they reduced the price of one of the models by close to that amount. Yeah. Um, so that way, they're the ones that are essentially absorbing the the rebate, and that way the customer is, is can still you know get a similar inexpensive entry price. Um, so I thought that was that was a very good move by Chevy. And again, back in even the Volt days, I, I was happy that Chevy was you know going into EV and, and even at that point taking a loss. So I appreciated what they were trying to do, and I appreciate what they're still trying to do, uh, and and we 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 liked it. Um, we were. We didn't do the test drive while we were at the show. We yeah. could have. Um, and then my sister got a call the other day regarding a test drive at a local dealership down in Dallas. They said, oh, come in and test drive the EUV and we'll give you a $50 Amazon gift card. And we're like, yeah, let's bring the whole family. Everybody go get a card. And then that later that day, they announced the recall yeah. of them. And so we decided to hold off for now. Um, but it is still something that we would like to at least go and drive just to have that experience. And again, and we're not turned off by the, the battery fires. <laughs> I think that just, you know, that's something that all the manufacturers are aware of and they're taking all the, the precautions they can to avoid them. Um, I, I, from a rarity perspective, it's still rare. Uh, you know, there's some Tesla battery fires. There's a big hoopla over it and, but, but it's just so rare. So that'll get under control. I, you know, and ICE cars, internal combustion engine cars, they catch fire too. Um, I had an old Ford GT that had an ignition fire. So, you know what? All cars are pr prone to that sort of thing. So I'm not detracted by that. And I hope the market isn't as well. I hope not. Yeah. Um, the, the cool thing that we did like uh, uh, was with one of the accessories that the, the Chevy had, which was they had a, a kind of a hybrid of a regular wall plug but it had an adapter to allow it to charge at a much higher rate, not as fast as if you had like a level two home charger, like a 40 amp or anything higher like that, but it was still much more, uh, it was much faster than the regular, you know, 12 amp. So I, I forget the specifics. If I can dig up the picture, cause we did take a picture did, of it, yeah. I will try to splice it into the video, um, part of my Adobe Premiere skills. Uh, they're they're not good at all, um, but we'll try to do that because I thought that was a very good innovation that they're bringing to the table. I think, especially when you're traveling and if you know, ha you know, heaven forbid something happens with you know Electrify America or whomever you're using the charge, and you're you're short of options. If as long as you can get reach a wall plug, and this can can draw a higher higher amp and and do whatever to charge faster than it regularly would, that's a win in my books. Sure. So I definitely appreciate them mm -hmm. taking some innovation from that perspective as well. Um, so next we would talk about the ID4, so, which we weren't really excited about. Well, one of our previous videos, I mean, I was pretty harsh on it because again, I, I can only have an opinion based on what I see. Uh, and, and at that point, I'm just seeing what other people are showing me. And so that that's to be expected. Um, when we were, when we saw it on the show floor, we, our first thought was what the, the, it looked really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, a great paint color. I think mm -hmm. they chose that really well. It was the Pro S, ID4 Pro S uh, trim level. Um, and they had a lot of different versions, a lot of did. different examples of the car. So that was nice. That was nice. And, and you can go in and sit them and stuff. And, and so that in, that increased my impression level. Because again, I, I, Volkswagen is in my blood just as much as Kia and Ford are. Um, so for me, it was like, okay, this is you know, much better than I thought. Uh, not just from an exterior perspective. I mean, it's still... Pretty standard from an exterior, but it's still a nice shape. The interior, 
was much better than I expected, especially the light interior, which again is is always going to be hit and miss for for me when something's white on the uh, on the interior because it really depends a lot on the material quality um, that that kind of decides if it's if it's essentially deemed as cheap or luxury or luxurious or whatnot. Um, I, I was very very happy with the interior. Certainly, uh, you know, not not as nice as the Kia and things like that, but uh, it was really nice. It actually. <laughs> excuse me it actually kind of triggered it for us like you know what let's make sure that we put this on our test drive list yeah um so we can get a feel for it um and then you know but before we get into the test drive going back to the information issues that we saw at the show is i noticed i was mentioning page like wow they only have one car on their entire show floor and i think it, i don't even i think it was just a jetta if I'm not mistaken, because I didn't go around to the back to find out, but it was pretty generic looking. Um, so I asked them, like, if they, just out of curiosity, did they have, you know, any of the other cars like the Golf R or the GTR, GTR or something like that? And they were mentioning that, yeah, they had it for press day, but they didn't want to have it out for, for consumers. So I thought that was kind of like, ugh, thanks, Will. It was a little disappointing. It yeah. was. And even then, even then if it's not something that, that I'm particularly looking sure. for at this point in my life, it would have been nice to see it because I, I am a, a golf fan in general. Right. Uh, and, they, and they didn't have a lot of information about it. Either, it yeah, it so. goes back to the the, per, the initial person we talked to was looking at the press release, mm -hmm. and even then, they didn't do a good job at conveying the information, not just in the Golf R, but on the the new uh, uh, GTI platform, which is the the Mark Eight. Um, they they were like calling it Mach Eight and things like that. I'm like, what is this, a V8? I was, I was mm -hmm. getting confused because they were confused, and even when they pulled in another rep, that person was a little bit more knowledgeable, but they were still referencing. The press release as well so again it's always disappointing when mm. they're just not prepared with the information um, that's on the, either on the floor or what was shown to the press i mean you, you should you, and consumers should can have similar questions with the press that and they should be prepared for that whether they're showing it to the consumers or not so that was disappointing but let's move on to the test drive yeah so they had a really nice little test drive area and you could on one side of the lane you could test drive the electric vehicles and then on the other side of the lane you could test drive their other cars and so you had it was a huge stark ratio as to how many people <laughs> wanted to test drive the id4 versus how many people wanted to test the other vehicles yeah. And uh, surely that, it was like six, seven to one. They had easily. they had the all the ID fours. They were wrapped in in different colors with the name of them, and they were really kind of nice looking. And and one guy behind us was I want to drive a purple one, like he was adamant. He wanted the purple car. I don't know if there was any difference between any of the cars that they were Didn't test driving, like it, yeah. but he his had to be purple. I am willing to wait for that purple car to come back. And they had seven, seven or I eight, think, yeah. and they were doing it. <clears throat> they did it very smartly. Mm -hmm. They gave you the car. <laughs> gave you the car. They basically they already pre-programmed the coordinates of the show, and and a sample route that you could take. But you know they said, hey, take 10, 15 minutes, knock yourselves out, take your time. Uh, and they you know they made sure everything was cleaned in between mm -hmm. uses, so that way you weren't really concerned. You know from a COVID perspective, they're taking all the precautions they could. You know they recommended people wear masks if they were concerned and things like that really well done really high kudos to volkswagen for going that far mm -hmm. and just allowing people to just experience it especially because you're in a downtown area by a convention center uh if you don't allow people to go outside that downtown area because volkswagen the route they planned was outside the area yeah. in kind of the opposite direction of downtown so you wouldn't have to worry about a lot of traffic versus the downtown versus and, the downtown traffic sure, and stoplights sure. which is not which is a short and probably not a very good enjoyable or representative experience a plus to volkswagen for, for going that route they and definitely they had win people, the test drive wars they this. had like reps in line so they would talk to you about what your expectations are what you're hoping to get out of it and and kind of some of the features that the car had and i know as soon as justin sat down in the driver See, they were like, oh, did you want to turn on the massage chair? Yeah. And we were both like, massage, massage chair. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I believe I would. Yes. yes. Yeah. Has yeah. anybody said no that's to that bonus option? points for Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a, that's a nice touch. Though, the downside of the ID4 was these janky armrests. I'm not sure who thought that up. Yeah. It was really, it reminded me of my old... Honda CRV, where my sister complained because I only had one armrest and it was on the driver's side and it was one that you could just 
raise and lower with your hand and that's what it was both sides drivers and passengers i guess they save money on the armrest and put it into the massage I, chair like well that <laughs> they probably thought well you know each individual gets their own armrest but the problem is they they weren't that wide yeah so i, I one i don't know what the strength of it would be is if i'm sitting and trying to shift myself and really lean on it how well it would hold up and then it's just not wide enough to, it really wasn't comfortable. No. Compared to, and I realize compared to what we're used to, I mean, that's always going to be the, the, the marker, right? And that was just a really odd choice. But otherwise, I think well appointed. Uh, the steering wheel felt good and a little nice and cushiony and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it rode fine. Definitely not the speediest vehicle in the world, but it's not trying to be. Mm -hmm. um, so for what it is, uh, yeah, it made me reconsider, you know, my opinion of the ID4. Sure. It's, it definitely is a thumbs up and it's one I, I could, I definitely could see myself uh, recommending it to someone because it just was that good, especially for the, the I think you get a nice, a nice value proposition from that. If you're not looking for performance, that is a very good alternative. Yeah, I think you people. even mentioned it for our daughter. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Of course, now she's working from home, so I'm not quite sure she needs a car. Yeah, but... not not yet, but <laughs> but it's one I would recommend for, sure. for family. That That's uh, how it changed my mind. And again, that, that's the beauty of trying things hands-on versus relying on videos. And, and, and I'm, like we said before, we're very thankful for all the content that we've seen and consumed and, and getting various people's opinions. And even on the ID4, there was a lot of people that liked the ID4. Mm -hmm. um, it just for me, from what I saw, it just didn't really impress me. But seeing it in person, yeah, that's a game changer. And I encourage everyone to do the same as, you know, give everything a chance. Yes, do all the research you can. And yet that's going to pro provide a basis of opinions and things that you may want to look for extra and things like that. But I, yeah, I, I'll stop talking about it, but it was, it was really good. I really liked it. So I guess to wrap up, is that the the last? That's thing we the checked? last, yeah. Right, because the we were, we tried to find Hyundai. Yeah. Yeah, because we you know right we priorited the EV six, but we know there's the Ionic five, and and even when we were talking to uh, the Kia, uh, Carl at Kia, we were mentioning that you know we like the Ionic five exterior because mm -hmm. again the previous video page was talking about like the the pixels and how what wonderful job they did on that, and and I like mm -hmm. the the external shape. Very rally ish, rally mm -hmm. car ish. Um, but I really wanted to see the interior more because in watching some of the videos, the interior was kind of my my hit or miss question mark. Um, and but but I will say, Hyundai had a much better uh, U.S. Uh, North American reveal than Kia because theirs was out of the park, mm. Hyundai. But it was a shame that they weren't there, and I don't think they were even there from a press perspective. And the VW but I saw somebody with a Hyundai bag. That's the that's the weird part, but yeah. I, I don't. There's, when we were searching for videos when we got home, I didn't. We didn't see any no. that emanated from the Chicago Auto Show, uh, or Chicago Auto Show, and but but Porsche wasn't there either, and mm. neither was Audi. Was and they the they did person. have some of the and the Hummer. I don't know if the Hummer was there. I guess it might have been wrapped with the U.S. Army thing, maybe. That's what yeah. we were thinking. Yeah. yeah, but they had the the other cars like the fancy cars they had the oh, super they had a bunch of they had big yeah. supercar display yeah. yeah and so you could go around and look at those and, and some of those were really pretty but we yeah. didn't take any pictures of those yeah but you know overall because though, you couldn't get into them you could just see them exactly overall though i mean it, it was a gr great to experience um i'm going to assume that you know once we're past this covid stuff it, the auto shows will just get bigger and better and more manufacturers will be there because there were some one well one manufacturer I can think of off the top of my head that it was just like uh, it looks like they just booked the space and they just parked a handful of cars and you know put some poor sap at the at the desk in the middle and that was it it yeah. was stark and man it was it was Honda it was just not a, I was like <laughs> why even bother being there if you're not yeah. even gonna try. Uh, yes, it would have left an empty space, but they pretty much left an empty but space. From anyway. the advertising, they were Chicago's number one auto seller, yeah. so they didn't that's, need to represent. Yeah. They were already getting it done yeah. there, so but, maybe um, that's why. But yeah, it was great. Um, so, so what was your biggest takeaway? Your biggest win? Well, I mean, I think the you mean being able to touch the EV6 that was the the biggest win. Um, that, that was just fantastic. But I mean, there were a couple honorable mentions. Mm -hmm. um, but before I get to it, uh, let's talk about yours. What's your biggest win? Oh, definitely the EV6. And, yeah. and then making us feel like VIP and allowing us to get in there and, and look at the car, knowing, you know, how disappointed we would have been had it, had we not. Yeah. 
And so from an honorable mention perspective, I, and I, I think we, we each have our own, but technically I think combined, we both have these two honorable mentions. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, you know, um, Fumu, Ford, Maki, EGT, um, it was just really fantastic to, to speak with her and, you know, how, how nice she was uh, with us and, and whatnot. Um, it just really, really helped and reinvigorated my interest in the Maki, which I'll, I'll talk about in a future video. Um, but, you know, the other honorable mention. The, that the Kia guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, just the in in everybody with the excitement level around electric vehicles. And um, we wore our shirts to the show the second day. And and a lot of people were coming up to us. Oh, what does that mean? What is that about? And yeah. asking us questions. And we're really interested in, in what we were trying to accomplish with this channel. And, and I was excited it, it just made us feel good to know that maybe we are going down the right path with this yeah yeah i think i think we definitely made the right choice about not just choosing to choosing to go down the ev lifestyle path but documenting it and yeah. trying to help contribute to the overall um, knowledge base um so then let's move on to disappointments okay and i'll start with mine and really it was the fact that the onyx 5 wasn't there right i mean because for oh, me mine same mm -hmm. part of it is you know, if we're going to jump into EV, we want to make sure that we're jumping into at least new technology. Uh, and, and and with the EV6 and the Ionic, it's really future technology from a charging perspective. And again, I would have loved to have seen the interior in person because that was kind of the, the thing that was that was holding me back from an Ionic 5 because I was sold on the exterior. But the interior with that removable island... Uh, you know, especially with the light interior, it, it's really hard to gauge what it's going to be like actually sitting in it. So I was disappointed that it wasn't there. Yeah. And not being able to test drive the Maki, I think, is another one that we were both pretty disappointed by. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if they would have the GT version to test drive. Because, again, one, being able to test drive a premium edition would have been nice because that's the uh, a higher quality interior um and it was would have been all-wheel drive which is different from the the rear wheel drives that we test drove but for me if i'm going to make the decision to pull the trigger on a gt or gt performance version of the maki i need to test drive those because they are much faster they're going to handle differently and in some cases they have the upgraded suspension that i'm also going to want to experience and until i can do that i i can't in good conscience order a maki uh, certainly if there's a, a situation where uh, my deposit is completely 100% refundable, then that's a different conversation. Um, but as my understanding today from when I've talked to the Ford dealers in the past, that was, they couldn't say for certain that that was going to be the case. And I don't trust dealers enough to take their word for it unless it's in writing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah. kind of a disappointment for me, I think. Yeah. And I did not win. That's There was a giveaway at the Ford booth. They were giving away this really huge giraffe, giraffe yeah. stuffed animal. Um, and I think it would look good in the back of my EV6. Um, <laughs> it would be good. But it, I didn't win it. I, and they did a second drop because yeah. there were a bunch of people there and they were trying to, you know, trying to be nice and um, did not win the second one either. Oh, I was no. I was very disappointed in Ford and in Paige. I, oh, thought, she, I thought she would have. Uh, I didn't crinkle on. my paper up enough didn't to give win. Didn't give it the hint. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the other, the other disappointment was the uh, the Kia backpack because it was just <laughs> so horribly made yeah. that it was it ripped like when we put stuff in it the next morning not even heavy stuff. So when I went, um, I forget what Paige was doing at the time. I went to I the, was signing up to win the giraffe. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I went to <laughs> replace the bag, and the guy he the guy the the desk you know gave me a new one, but he's like, yeah, don't put heavy stuff. And I'm like, I didn't. That's how poorly made these things are. And to me, is if you're gonna do a giveaway. Make sure it's of high quality that it can at least survive the days that you're at the <laughs> show. But don't blame me if your very poorly made backpack tears from very lightweight. It's a so, backpack. But we are going to go on record and say that we're pretty sure that people who made the backpack do not make the cars. Correct. <laughs> Correct. But Kia, take note, mm -hmm. if you can't do a, a quality giveaway, don't do one at all. Sure. Why associate any negativity when people are coming there to get only positivity? It just makes no sense. <laughs> but that's but uh, yeah, I think I think that is it for the 
for the show. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching uh, and, and taking this adventure with us. Um, please hit that like and subscribe button. Click on the notification. And we will see, see you, you on the next adventure. There we go. Take care. Bye.